Hello, everybody. Will Johnson, UniteAmericaFirst.com. Thank you for joining me. I have a very special guest, Barry Newsbaum. We're going to talk about Joe Biden and BLM and the direction of the country. He has a website, americatruthproject.org. Check him out. Go there today. Check it out today. Show some love. Go check him out. Tell him Will Johnson sent you. Barry, sir, thank you for joining me. It's so great to be with you, my friend. Always a pleasure. Yeah, absolutely awesome. So just out, the news is Joe Biden picked Kamala Harris for the VP. So give me your opinion and your thoughts on that. Well, first of all, a high five to Barry for predicting this. Um, I thought it was always going to be her for the whole time. Um, she has the least amount of perce perception in the uh, Democrat Party uh, of being a radical. She's not Elizabeth Warren um, or any of the real left wingers, but but she's got a ton of baggage and it's going to alienate at least the middle of the road people. And by that, I mean, uh, as you well know, uh, the former head of the Democrat Party in California, a gentleman named Willie Brown ran it for a million years. He came out with a book last year talking about how he picked Kamala Harris um, out of the wilderness to have various important jobs within the Democrat Party uh, in San Francisco and then statewide. And according to Willie Brown, who ought to know, he did it because Kamala Harris was his secret lover. Now, mm -hmm. in mind, during this time, Willie Brown was supposedly happily married. I wonder <laughs> if anyone was gonna care. Yeah, you know, this 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 news about Kamala Harris being a VP pick comes on the heels of the letter that just was recently released by Sean Pitty Combs, Diddy Combs, and other black activists pressuring Joe Biden to select a woman of color. Now, to my understanding, Kamala Harris is not really considered a black woman, but she's not white, so it's, she's close enough, I guess, to a woman of color. So a lot of people were saying that he was going to pick Kamala Harris and then it started looking like he was going to pick uh, some others. But before Kamala Harris, it may have been Stacey Abram, but they, Joe Biden was pressured to pick Kamala Harris. If you ask me now, with that said, when God forbid that Biden becomes president, do you see other countries recognizing that Biden was pressured by black activists to, and they demanded that he selected a woman of color. So he went right along with their demands. How does this look to other countries? Well, there's two issues here, Will. Um, I think the first issue is a majority of the American people have great doubts as to whether or not, I know this sounds bizarre, Joe Biden will even finish one term if he is elected, meaning in the history of American politics, there has never been a presidential election where more people will have ever paid attention to who the Veep is. Normally, a vice president is just sort of over there and you don't really pay much attention and they go to museum openings and sometimes they show up places where the president really doesn't want to go. My Goodness, in this case, this is all about she's probably going to be president if he gets elected because they don't think he's going to finish a term. So that makes him look weak to me in the eyes of other countries. And the other countries are going to be wondering, is she really behind the scenes pulling the strings? And if not, well, here's the big question. Who is? Yeah, exactly. And to be honest with you, because Joe Biden... He probably he probably doesn't even know that Kamala Harris has been picked for him or he doesn't probably remember that Kamala Harris is his VP now. <laughs> so going into the presidency, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to make a wild guess here. Within the first hundred to maybe 200 days, Joe Biden will have to step down and she will become president of the United States. God forbid that she's become that that Joe Biden wins in uh, November anyways, which is most likely not going to happen. I mean, so you're right. The rest of the world is going to look at it like, oh, Joe Biden is easily influenced. 
I mean, they sent a letter and that's all it took to, to pull his, pull his strings. I mean, cause it really started looking like he was going to pick someone else. Yeah. But, I, I think, I think of all the, the radicals in the corral that he was allowed to choose from, right? It had to be a woman and it had to be a woman of color. Um, that narrowed the field quite a bit. And, um, quite frankly, she is the strongest debater. She's the best public speaker. And in a lot of areas where Joe Biden is confused, he does, well, I'm just being blunt. He often doesn't know what city he's in when he's making a statement. And he makes racist statements and he makes misogynist statements and he makes pedophile statements that are embarrassing, not only for his candidacy, but for the United States that this guy would be so prominent, I guess they think Kamala Harris will bring some sort of stature and some sort of presentability. But here's an interesting question. The BLM movement has made it very clear and their supporters in Antifa and the various rioting groups that are destroying half of America's large cities, they don't want anybody who supports the police they don't want anybody that sends people to prison. They don't want anybody that enforces laws. And she was the prosecutor, the top prosecutor in the state of California for quite some time as attorney general. How are they gonna justify that? Yeah, you know what, that's a very good question. And then she locked up a lot of people over simple marijuana charges. And she and she was happy about it. She felt like she was champion of locking up a lot of people of color, mind you. And she was all about it. So in the case of Black Lives Matter and all of their celebrities and corporate promoters, are blacks actually benefiting from your point of view? from the Black Lives Matter movement? Well, when we say blacks, I mean, I, I assume we need mainstream black America. And the answer is absolutely, unconditionally, without any fear of contradiction, no, no, no. As I've said repeatedly, and you know my opinion on this, there's, do black lives matter as a question or a statement? Well, of course, all lives matter. But BLM as a movement is Marxist, is revolutionary, Mm -hmm. It's anarchist, it's anti-American, it's anti-religion, it's anti-family, and probably at its core, it's communist. And, and the attention it's getting as a movement is extraordinary, where average people, nice people that care about other people are thinking, well, I want blacks to be equal to whites. Of course I do. So let me help them out. Well, the money is going to revolutionary tactics that literally, and they announce it proudly every time they get a microphone, we're going to tear down America. We're going to yeah. we're going to eliminate yeah. the police. We're going to empty the jails. Look, I saw this morning from Chicago, the big BLM march that's going on right now while you and I are on the air. And the sign said something like, um, we were, our, our, let's see, our future was looted by you, so now we are going to loot you in return. That's almost an exact quote. And then, get this, Will, the head of BLM in Chicago gets on the microphone and says, our people are looting Gucci and Nike so they can eat. Wow. What and he's a crock. And, and she said, by the way, that she supports it, and the police ought to get out of the way. So here's an interesting question for you and our viewers. Where does the Democrat Party stand on this? And what are they going to do? Is that going to be part of their platform? Well, you know, rioting and looting without masks for BLM, the movement, not the people, is fine. And you know what? You know what's really amazing? You have groups like or organizations, businesses like Nike that support their tyrannical thing. And now they're going to go loot and tear the store up and steal everything they can. You know, it's, it's, I hate to say it, but you know what? It's back on them for supporting something that was so evil in the first place. You know, let me ask you this. BLM has joined up with Antifa because they're both a Marxist group, which you just mentioned, and they love smashing, th smashing things. I mean, they do. Um, how long do you think the co cohabitation can last since Antifa 
consists of mainly rich white kids. Oh yeah, it's extraordinary. When you see the pictures of who got arrested, you know, these these people that have escaped from their parents' basement. <laughs> like, honest to God, they're 95% white. They're covered with tats and piercings and green hair. And they think they're saving the world by tearing mm -hmm. down the system. Here's what's going to happen. It's kind of like the Russian Revolution, you know, in 1918. You had the Mensheviks, you had the, Bol the Bolsheviks, you had Stalin, you had Lenin, you had Trotsky. Well, they all merged together because they hated the czar. And then they run the czar out of town and then and kill him and his whole family. And then they mm -hmm. run the revolutionary Democrats out and then they turn on each other. Why? Mm -hmm. Because that kind of system is not democratic, it's totalitarian. So eventually it's a shark frenzy and they eat each other at some point. Antifa is going to turn on BLM or BLM is going to turn on Antifa and they're going to start going after each other because, as you just pointed out, they have commonality in certain philosophies like, uh, I hate America, I hate white people, I hate the police, I hate the government, I don't want to pay taxes. But who gets to be in charge? Yeah. The black Marxists yeah, it's just total chaos. anarchists. Yeah, total chaos. And it's almost like this is what they've been pushing for. It's like they finally get the, the mechanism or they have the momentum that they've been calling for to push all of this onto the entire country. And like you just mentioned, it's like they want to tear down the entire system and start all over again because they don't like that America is one of the, is, is the greatest country uh, known to man. So let me ask you this. One of the things which we all can agree that both groups have a common, uh, they have a common goal. They both would like to blame Israel or the Jews for their imagined problems. How does uh, calling for, how do you say it? Uh, Amphidata? In, in, intifada. Intifada, yes, thank you so much. Against Israel. The, the idea actually comes from ancient communism and Marxism revolutionaries which have this thought, this thought that if you can pick the other and make the other the reason why, then that becomes the enemy. So hmm. pick the Jews. It's really interesting. You know, the in, in the beginning of the black power movement in the 60s, um, and I've studied this quite a bit, the greatest leader in black American history is Martin Luther King. I mean, what he accomplished in a very short number of years truly is extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And one of his big things was peaceful protest. You don't tear yes. down the system. You become part of it and you get out and you vote. Remember all the voter registration stuff he used to push? Well, he had another thing and another comment, which was he acknowledged the fact that the strongest movement for black rights in America was the NAACP founded about 100 years ago, by Jews and blacks to empower blacks. And so when Martin Luther King marched, and you see the white guys arm in arm with him, those were Jews. And he acknowledged that. And he said, you know, my Jewish brothers and my black brothers were all one family under God. And he believed in religion and he believed in God. And mm -hmm. his Jewish friends were his allies. And he said, if you're anti-Israel, meaning anti-Zionism, the idea of a Jewish state, you're anti-Semitic, and mm. we will never be that. Mm. Does anyone so, remember the teachings of Martin Luther King anymore? I know. Well, you know, you're right. And the left, they, they've, they've taken on like Martin Luther King as if his movement is their movement, but is their movement is not the same because they ha they're calling for violence. And why do you think that they, they? Why do you think that they say that you know Martin Luther King was all for them, but yet they're calling for violence? What's the change from peaceful protesting to violent protesting in your point of view? Well, it's one word. They're lying. It's just <laughs> it's, it's academically 
<laughs> yes. It's academically a lie. <laughs> I mean, it's plain and simple. That's what it is. You're absolutely yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, you're, they're calling up, down, you know, and, and how do you deal with that? You know, it's not even logically able to be defended. Martin Luther King was all about an American dream, and he wanted the American dream yep. to include every color of the rainbow. And he's right. I mean, wise words that now we're sitting here going, geez, doesn't that make sense? Shouldn't we all be brothers together in America? All go vote and pick somebody black, white, green, or whatever. The black movement today, and when I say that, I mean the BLM movement, mm -hmm. is about as anti-American as you can get. It's as if Farrakhan changed the name of the Nation of Islam. I'm talking about his Nation of Islam, which is a um, a crazy group of fanatical American haters, Jewish haters, right, right. white haters, capitalist right. haters, and mm -hmm. they became a new movement. They called it BLM movement, except that the people running BLM stand up and go, I'm a trained Marxist revolutionary. They don't even keep it a secret anymore. They yeah. advertise it. And then they say, we're going to destroy the American system. There will be no police. There will be no incarceration. There will be no prisons. There's a word for that. It's anarchy. And you'll have everybody shooting everybody else in the streets, the bad guys shooting the good guys and the good guys trying to defend themselves. And I don't mean guys as in men, I mean all the people. The, you know what the great irony is here, Will? Do you know which colored community in America wants the police the most? Black people. Of course. <laughs> because oh. that's what, I mean, most of the crime is happening there, but you know what? You have groups like Antifa and BLM that's getting money from rich white people telling them that you need to get rid of the police because that's your problem. Well, that it's just the opposite. They're being lied to and they're taking that information and they're lying to everyone else and they're getting a lot of people to believe it. There's, this is, there's, a, very, there's a very common um, series of posts that I encourage your viewers to go look up. Uh, on Facebook as an example, I see it all the time. I also see it on Instagram where BLM movement people and their supporters, this is not a joke, say, if you want to help black people and you want to help our movement, here's a link for you to log into to pay off my student loans mm. and pay off my credit cards. Mm. And I will consider that me young black woman or me, young black man, um, I will consider that reparations to me. You owe me that for having me on your plantation for hundreds of years. Yeah, I, and I gotta believe people are sending the money. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, you know, I've said that about the, the Democrat Party. The Democratic Party, if anyone's gonna pay for reparations, it's gonna be those in the Democrat Party. Anyone who's registered a Democrat, it should be a Democrat tax. You're a Democrat, you pay a Democrat tax. I mean, seriously. So, when you know, when looking at Antifa's literature, you know, they're all about destruction. Nothing about building up a small business or restoring the black family. You know, what would you... Uh, what would you personally say to anyone who's thinking about joining this tyrannical group, Antifa, thinking that it's a cool way to change the world or fix the world? Well, let me ask you this. If you lived in a major city today, or I would, this is my answer, Chicago, Los Angeles, Philadelphia, Seattle, Minneapolis, San Francisco, especially mm -hmm. lately, um, mm -hmm. you want to be able to drive down the street with your family or walk down the street and know that you can ex you have an expectation of your constitutional rights against being um, accosted, screamed at, attacked, whatever, to be held in place. Those structures are what we rely on in a peaceful society. If you wanna see what anarchy looks like, right now, Google Beirut and look at it. People are shooting each other down in the streets. They're rioting because they finally realized that Hezbollah and that massive explosion from all their stored weapons exploded because nobody cared enough to do anything about it. You break down civil society today, Will, and that's where America will be very, very quickly. I've got friends in Minneapolis that say they're scared to death to drive anywhere 
outside their suburban neighborhood for fear of dying. Now, yeah. who would have thought a year ago or six months ago? Six months ago, yes. Wow. Before the whole before the whole pandemic kicked in, no one was thinking that we would be in this predicament. But you know what? I kept calling it out. I said they want civil unrest throughout the entire country. And long as they have the civil unrest, they're gonna they're gonna be happy about it and they're gonna continue doing it. Let me ask you one last question before I go. And we're gonna put you up with your website. Um, what do you think is gonna happen? come November 3rd or November 4th after President Trump wins. Well, I love that. And, and tell everyone how to find you at the same time, please, sir. First of all, prediction, I agree with Will Johnson. I believe President Trump will be elected again for one simple reason. I think he's gonna become the law and order president in the next 90 days or 80 days, whatever it is. And people who don't normally answer polls are gonna say, oh my, God, Will's right. Anarchy's coming if the other side wins. I want America to be peaceful again. I'm going to vote Trump because he's the only guy calling out BLM and Antifa. And for people that want to learn about what we say about this every day, you can go to our website, which is americantruthproject.org. Or if you have a cell phone and you want to get all of our videos like this one for free, just text the message TRUTH, T-R-U-T-H, and send it to 88202, push send. That signs you up for our text mess message alert system. You get all of our stuff on your cell phone, absolutely free, and you don't even have to use a computer. It comes right to your phone. So thanks for asking. Awesome. Thank you, sir, for joining me. Great honor and pleasure to talk to you again. Thanks so much for having me. You're a, you're a gentleman, a scholar, and a true patriot, and I'm a big <laughs> Will Johnson fan. Thank you, sir. And I'm, I'm your fan as well. <laughs> Absolutely. AmericaTruthProject.org, everyone. Show some love. Tell Barry Will Johnson sent you. All right. Awesome. Appreciate Take it. Take care.